Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. Hey, it's me, Alex, and I was struck by something the other day. I was attending my daughter. She's a fifth grader. They had, uh, I was attending a concert, a musical choir review the other night that the fifth grade had been working on pretty much all semester. It was a jukebox time machine. And of course, I'm always thinking hot tub time machine, but it was jukebox time machine. And what it was, was a magic jukebox where they put in a quarter and they could go to various eras, you know, uh, of music. And then they would play music from that era. Of course, I was very attuned to, uh, my daughter was dressed like for the 80s section and she had a speaking part towards the end. And um, I think the 80s, they did uh, Journeys Don't Stop Believing, which, you know, is actually a very very prescient thing right now, that sentiment of don't stop believing. Um, But they went all the way back to the 20s as well, the Roaring Twenties, which came on the heels of the worst pandemic the world had ever known, the Spanish flu pandemic, which I don't know if you know, but a lot of people don't know, started not in Spain, but in Kansas. And it killed so many people worldwide, just the most epic modern it's 100 years ago, but it's the most epic modern pandemic we've known, perhaps, until now. So, here I am talking to you, and I'm going to just straight up tell you, this is not some really highly structured episode, but I wanted to just communicate a few things to you about where we find ourselves and what I think about it. If this, if nothing else, perhaps this will entertain you or certainly won't take your mind off of the impending um, pandemic and health crisis that the entire world is now facing. But I'm hoping to shed a little light, also some information, and um, don't want it to be a total downer. So I'm going to work on not doing that. But I wanted to tell you a few things about that sentiment starting with this after that wonderful show, that review about 30 minute review with different music from different eras that you know the 20s 30s 40s 50s uh, all the way up to now I was sitting in a you know a auditorium well it's basically a gym that has a stage whatever they call those these days a multi-purpose stage area with probably a couple of hundred parents and family of the kids and yeah. my neighbors sitting right next to us uh in and around us, my daughter's best friend's parents. And I was in the middle of the show, and I was having a good time. It was fun. And then uh, it struck me, this is the last time, probably for a long time, that people are going to get together like this in large groups around here. This is the last time, probably for the school year, for sure, but maybe even longer after that, that we'll have a carefree moment when we're all together in the same room, when there's hundreds of us together. And this is the last time I'll see joy and excitement, perhaps, on my daughter's face for quite a while. And of course that makes me sad. And of course that's troubling. But it is true. And there's no amount of this is an overreaction or this is going to magically stop happening when it gets warm. There's no amount of wishful thinking that is going to change the way it is right now. I try to stay off the Twitterverse as much as possible. Twitter is not real life. But it is disturbing to see people who say this is all a joke, it's all a hoax, it's overblown. If you think that way, and your mind is set that way, this episode is not for you. This is real. As someone who has documented brushes with um, severe health problems in the past few years, I can tell you, I take this very seriously. I work very hard to be as healthy as possible for a man in his early 50s. I struggle to make sure I am not in any way immunocompromised. I'm trying to stay healthy. You know that the, if you're a frequent listener, the gym is my is my constant destination 
three to five times a week, and then I'm hiking in the woods when I can, well, I won't be going to the gym anytime soon. I've just decided the gym is still open. They they are doing their best to keep it clean and safe, but I don't think that gyms, even the cleanest gym, is a good option right now, at least not for me. There's just too many sweaty people who may have coughs or colds, and then you're touching the same gear, and it's just, I don't think it's prudent, so I'm not going, and I'll miss it a lot. Fortunately, I do have, it's a kickboxing gym, but I do have a, a heavy bag hanging outside in uh, my little patio under under the, uh, e, uh, not the eave, but under the uh, deck, so I can go out there and I can I can work out anytime I want to my heart's content, and I will. I'm not going to give up working out, and then I will definitely continue to hike alone probably, unless my kid and my wife want to go, but uh, I'll hike over to my favorite wooded area and walk the trails, staying away from people and just trying to catch a little fresh air and bathe in the forest a little. According to Johns Hopkins at this recording, March 14th, there are a total of 147,746 cases confirmed worldwide, the vast majority in China. Total deaths are 5,500 plus worldwide. I'm not going to linger on that part, but I just wanted to maybe offer some advice and some tips here. I'm not going to tell you how to wash your hands. That's readily apparent. But um, one thing that I did do early on a few weeks ago was starting to stockpile food simply because I assumed that there'll be a point where even voluntarily, like sheltering in place is going to be a real thing where, and that's what my family is doing. We are not interacting socially with anyone unless we have to. We are going to really limit for the next few weeks our interactions with others simply because if we do have it, we don't want to vector it to somebody. If we do have it, don't know it. But also if we don't have it, we don't want to be exposed to it. And we also have my in-laws who are, are older. We don't want to worry about vectoring something to them. So we are going to do that. So I started weeks ago stockpiling. Uh, stockpiling sounds so um, dramatic, but just making sure that we had enough to food to um, keep us from having to go out much particularly now when there's some scarcity because people are worried now. Um, the past few weeks, I've picked up enough food that could last us several several weeks, a lot of canned goods, a lot of stuff that we'll keep, and, and you know, of course, a uh, fair supply of uh, vodka and uh, gin and, and uh, that kind of thing um, because, hey, you know, life goes on, right? Just be aware when you're going to the store, if you need to go to the store, you know, I take a, a wet wipe that's the antibacterial one with me into the store. Often stores have them at the front by the carts, but often they don't. Usually I need a cart or a basket either way. I wipe down the handle with the wet wipe and I keep that wet wipe handy. And I kind of refer back to that wet wipe after I've touched things in the store that I have to touch, but I avoid touching things. What I love is the checkout. You don't necessarily have to touch anything these days. You just put your card in the machine. Um, the only thing that's been touched, unfortunately, is the checker. Even if they're wearing gloves, the gloves protect them, not your food. They touched your food to check it. So then you get home and you've got food that's been touched by everybody in the supply chain. So you have to think about that. Um, I'm not to the point of wiping down every box of food we have, but be aware. I always wash fruits and vegetables anyway, so that's not a problem, but think about that. It's it's good hygiene. Don't touch your face. All these things um, come to play. Also, some cold medicines and things to deal with the flu, basically, or a virus if you get it. I mean, um, the good news is that not everybody who gets it is going to have the most severe reaction to it. For many, blessedly, they are going to just feel like they have the flu, which sucks, but it beats the alternative. And so we made sure we had that. But I was looking, and I was looking at a website about this, and there's some advice from the CDC. Besides the general food, you want to get enough food to last you for a while, just in case, is, uh, you know, get your prescription meds as much as you can to help ahead of time. Talk to your provider. Make sure. Um, we get most of ours in the mail. Our insurance company insists on most of us, most of our scripts coming from the mail. But also, uh, our local CVS will deliver, too. I mean, there's a ton of advice like this out there. The uh, CDC recommends that... You avoid close contact with people who are sick. That's obvious. Stay home when you are sick, except to get medical care. Cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue. Clean, frequently touch surfaces and objects daily. Tables, countertops, light switches, doorknobs, cabinet handles. 
using a regular household detergent and water. If surfaces are dirty, they should be cleaned using a detergent and water prior to disinfection. For disinfection, a list of products from the EPA are approved. They're on the CDC website. I'll put these links there. There's all these. I'm not going to rattle off all those things. You know very well, I'm sure, or can access that. But that's what we're doing. This house has probably, to some degree, never been cleaner, although I really could uh, work on straightening up my office, and it looks like I'm going to have plenty of time to do that. So speaking of time, you know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I I am trying to find some silver linings here, and uh, one of those being, uh, <laughs> like it or not, I'm going to get some quality time with my spouse and my kid. That's that's how you make it, you know. I mean, we're all human. We're all going to have to retire to our neutral corners, I'm sure, very often in the next few weeks when we are staying here at home. Of course, you know, little dynamos, little champion gymnasts like my daughter who are doing cartwheels in the living room because she has so much energy, that's going to be a problem. But we're going to work through that. Um, good tip from my, a buddy of mine is like, you know, of course, no more sleepovers. And really, you don't want other kids in your house. But if the kids want to, with good weather, go ride bikes or they want to play outside and not touch each other and just try and maintain distance. That yeah. seems logical. I'll invite her to go on my walks, my hikes. I don't know if she's so into that, but she'll probably eventually wear down and go. But uh, I hope that, too, you'll see the, the 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 reasons why maybe if you're cocooned with your spouse and family, though, perhaps it'll make you realize, despite all of our shortcomings, why we married our spouses in the first place or, or our partners if you're not married. I know I told my wife last night we were talking about this that, you know, I'm glad I'm going through this with her. Um, I think that's important to make sure that the people in your life understand that you value them and you need them, and I think it will make things easier. But I think the the other thing to do too, when you're if you're sheltering in place, is just be aware of the people who are perhaps uh, vulnerable. You obviously can't go hug them and do the the natural things, but uh, perhaps if they need some food and don't have it or can't get out to get food, they can or they can give you a list and you can go get it for them and uh, leave it outside their door. Maybe it's somebody who's economically disadvantaged and vulnerable and, heck, they could just use a Venmo to pay the electric bill or something or, hell, even their cable bill just for a month so that they're not losing their minds at home with kids or something, you know, I I'm not saying I'm necessarily doing all those things. These are just ideas. I'm, like I said, I'm in a suburban area. We're all relatively well off. We're very comfortable. Certainly not rich, but I mean, we're very fortunate. And I, I am going to look into things I can perhaps do to help people who aren't, who don't have it so good here in my community. And I think it starts with, as you know, Voltaire said, it all starts in your own backyard. You you tend to your own garden, right? And But that doesn't just mean your own garden. That means your community, your neighborhood. We can't save the world, each of us, but we can save parts of it, and we can also save our basic humanity. There's so many people who are making light of this situation, who are being fed a line of bullshit from Fox News that it's a hoax or that it's overblown. And I hope it is overblown. I hope we can all step back and laugh about this later. I really do. I have a hearty laugh at all of our expense about, remember how we got all Y2K'd out about a virus? I would freaking love that. So, a couple of things too, silver linings for me. Um, if, if I mean, I'm, I'm just madly grasping for them, right? Uh, my work is virtual, so and my wife, fortunately, her company is very good about that, um, so we can work virtually most of the time. Um, there's very little I have to go meet with people about, and in fact, if a client insists I meet with them and I don't agree with it, I'm just going to say so, but uh, most of my work can be virtual. Most of my speaking engagements can be turned into webinars. That's good for me, too, and for the people who need them because everybody's stuck at home, and you know, there's only so much Netflix and chill you can do, right? So working is probably a good idea, and maybe just attending a webinar on something you don't know about. So there's that. But other things, uh, I'm looking forward to spending time with uh, John Pilot and uh, Taters Malley and Simon and Kate and the whole gang. And uh, to my listeners, and you know who you are, who are uh, haranguing me pleasantly on Twitter about uh, this would be a good time for maybe uh, our favorite writers to uh, 
write some more stories. And you're totally right. So I'm. it's kind of helping keep me sane to write about the next chapter and uh, the John Pilot mysteries. And uh, I, I started it, well, weeks ago, obviously, uh, but now I, I have more time to focus on it and I intend to. I'm going to be productive. But uh, other thing I want to do is for you listeners, I mean, if you're listening to this, you're listening for a reason. You must get something out of this. You must enjoy it. I I had intended for MGO to be on a hiatus because I was supposed to be in New York City for a crisis communications conference that, you know, ironically has been canceled due to a crisis. Um, so I'm not going to be in New York. And I've got some other speaking engagements that have been zeroed out and uh, work is slowing down. So I think I would like to, if it's of a comfort to you and of interest, offer you to do more podcasting and be a voice that hopefully is of reason and some entertainment value. I already have uh, several particip- prospective guests lined up, including a, a mid-sized uh, publishing house got a hold of me. They heard, I think they heard my Gary Lippman interview. Good writer there, by the way. Read his book. I've got some recommendations for you uh, coming up. But uh, the, they want me to read a uh, book from one of their writers that's coming out. It's a mystery and interview the, the author. And I'm like, that's great. And I would like to do more of that. That's how this show started. It was about writing and authors, and I'd love to do that again. So we may be on this show fading out of talking about creativity in all walks of life, although I'm open to uh, guests who want to talk about creativity in the time of corona. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a good title, doesn't it? Hmm. But uh, I guess what I'm saying is they won't all be monologues like this where I'm droning at you for 20 minutes. It's gonna. I'm going to mix it up and continue to offer the show as best I can. It just depends on who can... Uh, spend the time with me and and get me a good hookup with good audio. I don't really like interviewing people who don't have at least, you know, a a reasonable sound quality. I, it's just, it's just grating on the ears of you, the listener. And I don't like listening to podcasts like that and where it's like they're, they sound like they're talking from down on a well or something. That's just the worst. So as long as we can meet the technical standards and uh, they're, they've got something interesting to say, we'll do that, including um, um, everybody's, well, my favorite political pundit and uh, societal pundit uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, evil deity, Euro Satan. He is going to be back. And uh, if you didn't catch the Euro Satan episode on the uh, Democratic primaries, it's uh, please check it out in your feed. It, I thought it was pretty funny. So he'll be back. Um, and I promise, yeah, you know, like I said, I won't monologue to you in every one of these. But speaking of podcasts, I want to tell you there's some shows that if you're not listening to, uh, can I just recommend a few to you that I like? I listen to a lot of political stuff. Um, I make no secret of the fact that I think we need to get rid of Trump. I'm all in on that. So if you're not that persuasion, I understand. And if you don't want to subscribe or listen any further, I understand. I'm not going to make it a point on MGO to talk political stuff, but I certainly listen to political stuff. And when I think it's necessary, I'll bring it up. I will also happen to think that Trump has really bungled this whole coronavirus thing. But I'm not going off on that tangent here. I think we all have our opinions about it, and I think a lot of those opinions are borne out by fact. A lot of them are not. There's a lot of propaganda out there, and it's sad, and it's going to get people killed. Look at me on my soapbox again. Help me down. Okay, what podcast do I listen to? I, uh, I There's several. Um, I love Preet Bahara's <laughs> show. Uh, he's former... Um, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, he does a show called Stay Tuned with Preet, which is culture, politics, society, all this stuff. It's really good. If you're into politics, uh, David Pluff, he has Campaign HQ. That's a good one. Talks about the race. Um, I also like um, the Slate Political Gab Fest every Thursday. John Dickerson, best journalist working in America today. He's really good. Him plus uh, David Plotz and Emily Bazelon. I've been listening to that for 15 years. It's a great podcast. Alan Alda, great uh, podcast, clear and vivid. It's about communication. It's so savvy. It's so smart. Lots of great guests, including Tom Hanks, is on a recent episode as of this recording. Several other famous people, but also just interesting people about the topic of communication, how humans communicate and receive information. It's really a fascinating show. I can't explain it very well, but it's a good one. If you're into marketing, Duct Tape Marketing Podcast with John Jantz, it's good. If you're into politics, Hacks on Tap is great. you got a conservative and a liberal political consultants talking about the, the horse race, about the, the election, and they do it in a way where they're, they're not yelling at each other. They're actually good friends, and I love hearing conservatives and liberals who are good friends talking to each other and being intelligent. It's so nice. I love Halloween. And it's it's profane and it's long, but if you're into home haunting, Hauntcast is an old favorite. It is profane and juvenile in places, but 
I, I just love Halloween and it just puts me in a good mood. So, and it's usually a couple of hours. They put out an episode every quarter now. They used to do it weekly or monthly and now it's quarterly. But How To with Charles Duhigg is great. Just just check these out. You go look on on, podca- on Apple Podcasts to look at the summaries. But I love that one. I love Star Trek and more. So Inglorious Trek Experts is the best Star Trek related podcast out there. And this is from a guy who once did a Star Trek related podcast. I bow to them. They're industry insiders. They're not just geeks. They they're geeks, but they they are active producers in Hollywood and writers and designers. And they get together and they interview great guests and they talk about Star Trek and and other things. It's really good. So Inside the Hive with Nick Bilton, the Vanity Fair podcast is pretty good. I'm an old MASH fan, so MASH Matters is, a fun, is one that I really like, and uh, it's uh, hosted by Igor. He was the uh, private uh, Igor who was like the guy who served up the slop in the mess tent. Uh, he was a, kind of a glorified uh, bit player on the show, but he was on the show for like nine years, So, and he's pretty funny um, in small doses. I love uh, Quinn Cummings gives bad advice. Actually, she gives pretty good advice, but it's a fun little show she does. Where the former child actress, I don't know if you remember that, but uh, I'm old. I remember her when she was a child actress. And uh, now she's all grown up and a great writer. And it's just a really entertaining show. And people give her, send in questions and she answers them. And she says it's bad advice and, you know, you get what you pay for. It's free and all that. But it's it's really good stuff. So I really like that. I like the Al Franken podcast every Sunday. What I, I love to do, I get up on a Sunday morning download that show, have my breakfast, and then I walk to the woods and I listen to the Al Franken podcast. It's usually about an hour that takes care of my walk to the woods and, and back. And I learn something. He has great guests and there's politics and there's stuff you need to know. It's really good. The 430 movie. Um, we didn't have the 430 movie that this is kind of based on back in the day, but the 430 movie is based on a, I think it was back east mostly where at 430, um, there was a movie every afternoon, but they had theme weeks like James Bond week or horror week or, you know, those kind of things. So they go, these four uh, movie gurus get together, um, critics and writers and all this, and they, and they program a week uh, based on a theme. So it's, it's kind of fun. It's, it's an interesting conceit. They're nice guys. They're funny. They're very knowledgeable about film. They got great opinions. You may not agree with all of them, but it's, it's a great listen. So I like that. Another political show I like, The Bulwark with Charlie Sykes. Um, uh, it's a conservative podcast, but I want to know what conservatives are thinking. And I'm talking about legit traditional conservatives, not Trumpers. These are non; these are never Trumpers. These are conservatives. These are um, honorable people who love America, but they have a different perspective. And I think it's important we listen to uh, different perspectives. And he has guests that are conservative, and he has guests that are liberal, and it's just very well done. Charlie Sykes, so there. Speaking of uh, the gist with Mike Pesca, Mike is probably the best wordsmith on the in the on the in the potosphere. I love his show. It's it's five days a week. Uh, the gist, and I mean, it's politics. It's it's pop culture. It's 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 everything. It's a great show. I don't agree with everything he says, but I respect how he says it. How about that? So those are some good ones. Um, you can, by the way, if you're like me and you love. Uh, Bob Dylan's Theme Time Radio Hour. You can still get that. And there's all the episodes are available as a podcast now. And man, that show, I could listen to I listen to that show all the time. It cheers me up. Bob's selection. It's all it's a theme every episode. You know, like coffee or jail or school or fathers or mothers or divorce or love or sex. And then the, there's all this music from all the way way back in the twenties, all the way to today. Well, until they stop making the show. So all the way till the middle of the last decade i guess and they're just great theme shows and worth listening to good local uh, podcast i like trading fours jamie green interviews musicians and uh, i mean this is just more than your standard so hey man what are you playing it's really about the music and about their lives and it's, i really recommend trading fours so that's a really good one there's others words matter podcast is great the ticket um there's, there's just a ton, but those are the ones that I listen to the most these days, I think. Um, did I mention Conan O'Brien needs a friend? Man, when you need a laugh, that's a great one. Great interviews and funny. And sometimes, too, when I just don't want to deal with anything from, from, from nowadays, I'll listen to old episodes of uh, CBS Radio Mystery Theater on the Old Time Radio Channel. There's just some great stuff there. So there's a lot of distraction that can be found in the potosphere. So I listen to those when I am cleaning house, when I am running or working out or um, walking. or I listen to the podcast constantly. I consume so much of it. And uh, I recommend that to you to help keep you um, enlightened, entertained, and uh, maybe encouraged, depending on who you listen to as we go through this.
And while I'm list making here, there's some books that I think you ought to look into while you're holed up or you need an escape. And I'll start with who I think is probably the best suspense thriller writer in America today, Jason McIntyre. He has a new one out called Boot Black Lane. It's it's a brand new novella, easy to download on Amazon. Jason's got so many other great books. You know, his Dovetail Cove series is fantastic. So check out Jason McIntyre. That's M-C-I... Wait a minute. Yeah, Jason, M-C-I-N-T-Y-R-E. Oh, Jason, forgive me. I need more coffee. Check him out. Um, while I'm at it, Eden Bailey writes great suspense and mystery and some really good um, erotic stuff, too. I think you start, if you're into suspense and mystery, with Stranger at Sunset. I just love Eden's work on that book. But uh, her erotica, Spring into Summer, Fall into Winter, those are are among the best erotica I've ever read. And By the way, these have both been guests on the show. My buddy, uh, another guest uh, a couple of times, uh, Michelle Stenson Ross, Revenge of the Siren Song. If you want to get historically accurate pirate stuff going on with a female lead, um, try Revenge of the Siren Song. Also, she is doing a Patreon, which we, we mentioned in her episode. Just go back to her episode for more information on that, um, where she's doing new chapters uh, for her patrons. So that would be a, a neat thing to look forward to, especially when you're stuck at home. And by the way, I've been asked by a couple of people if I'd do that. Um, now that I, uh, I might have more time on my hands, that's something. I don't know if I'd Patreon it. I might just put out some stuff here and there. I am considering reading some draft work of the new novel here on this show, though. So if you're interested in that, you know, give me a thumbs up somehow. Let me know that's cool to you. Uh, another uh, author to look into uh, who was a guest on the show, Gary Lippman, set the controls for The Heart of Sharon Tate. That book is doing really well, and uh, I've got that in my queue to read. Some other stuff I've read recently, or I'm working on, I'm reading right now, Washington's End, The Final Years and Forgotten Struggle uh, by Jonathan Horn. Check that one out. There's another Jason McIntyre book out, Kill the Lights. It's a fiction anthology, so it's like short stories. You can just kind of dig into those. I really like The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. That's nonfiction, just like the Washington book, of course, is nonfiction. But The Death of Expertise, no matter what your political stripe, and it's written by a conservative, but no matter what your political stripe, the book just talks about how America is pretty dumbed down. And here we are in a situation now where experts are frequently being denied and being uh, mocked and not listened to to our peril. So that's a great book, The Death of Expertise by Tom Nichols. Um, there are just a lot of books out there that I would recommend you read. Of course, I know of another author. If you uh, uh, are looking to kind of catch up, that'd be me. I would be honored if you would read Pilot's Cross or Pilot's Key or Pilot's Ghost or Pilot's Blood or Pilot 7, which is a book of seven short stories in the pilot universe that is probably my most acclaimed book ever. And then there's Pilot's Rose and uh, the new novella, Pilot's Shadow. So there's a lot of piloting going on there. If you're interested in that, you know where to find that. It's on Amazon.com under J. Alexander Greenwood, or just put Pilot, P-I-L-A-T-E, apostrophe S. If you leave out the apostrophe, you're going to get exercise books, (laughs) Pilates. Just look for the Pilot's series there. There's a weird hiccup on the site right now on the page that has the entire series. They've left off one of the books. I don't know why I'm trying to fix that, but by the time you hear this, that could be fixed. But uh, they left Pilot's Rose, which is the last book off of the list for some reason, but I'll get it fixed. Um, So there's all of my books. And of course, don't forget the uh, Western. If you want a good, historically accurate, sort of dense, but fun, action-packed Western, Big Cabin and Dispatches from the West. It's not just that book and and more. It's kind of a love letter to my grandpa, my late grandfather. It's a book I had to help finish. Um, I got the manuscript be, uh, after well, I had the manuscript for a long time, and then I found it again 18 years, or at the time, 16 years after he'd passed away, and it was there was pieces missing, so I had to fill in the blanks, and then uh, I put it into a book with one of his uh, pulp magazine short stories, and uh, and then I recap some of his letters and his poems, and it's just a great, I, if I say so myself, it's, it's, I say it because it's his work, and it, I love him, and I think you might just enjoy that yourself. So those are some books. If I left anybody out, don't worry. I'll be mentioning things to read uh, every episode from here on out, and I'm just so looking forward to that. But And, of course, you know what? I also want to know what you're reading. So if you have suggestions, go to mgopod.com, and there's a contact sheet, right? And you can just email me through the contact sheet or just go to the John Pilot Mysteries Facebook page. I tend to be a little more active on there. I've been a little quiet on Facebook lately, but uh, uh, I guess I'll have plenty of time to 
work on that kind of thing coming up. So, um, but let me know what you're reading. I'd love to know. And of course, if you're reading my books, uh, rating and uh, rating and reviewing them on Amazon helps me sell more and encourages me to keep writing. So, your ratings and reviews matter. And uh, if you've uh, bought the eBooks but not the paperbacks, buy the paperbacks. You know, and vice versa. Okay, I mean, we got to keep this train rolling. We got to keep the economy rolling, right? So. Anyway, uh, support your favorite writers. Please buy their work in, uh, in every format. I know I've thrown a lot at you on this yeah, one. We'll go from there, and I'll try and do some and, readings, uh, like I said. So I we'll can't share. So this books. is a this is a downer. This is a bad situation we're in. But you know, this is what I tell my crisis communications clients. You know, there's times there's there's oftentimes there's very little we can do about a crisis, but the one thing we can effect, one thing we can have some control over is how we react to it how we respond to it. Now, the keys to crisis communication start with planning. You should have a plan. And I've been telling people for weeks on my other podcast, oh, I didn't mention PR After Hours, my PR podcast. Check that one out, please. Um, But I've been haranguing my listeners about, you have time. This virus is coming. You have time. You have the luxury of planning time right now. Do it. Do it. Do it. If you haven't planned for your company, you need to know continuity. You need to know supply chain. You need to know how you're going to communicate it. Do it. You have that, and you still have that luxury now. It's bad now, but it's it's going to get worse. And I tell people to plan. So planning is number one, but how you respond to a crisis is the other. I say if you respond with sanity, with calm as much as possible, without um, freaking out, but also with love. Humans are volatile creatures. Humans would rather believe everything's going to magically go away. And you know what? Donald Trump said that, you know, it's just going to disappear in April or something. Because a lot of viruses do die off around April or May. And that's great. I'd love it. Oh, my God. I would love it. But I can't, you can't bank on that. You cannot bank on that happening. If you're banking on it just going away and you've done no planning and no prep and you are not responding uh, properly, you may very well reap the whirlwind. So... I'll stop haranguing you about it other than to say, I take this seriously. I think you should too. We're all in this together. I am so grateful to all of you wonderful listeners who take the time to hear my thoughts. I'd love to know what you think. If you would like to respond or, you know, there's so many ways to find me, but uh, on Twitter at A underscore Greenwood, um, through my website, go to MGOPod.com and there's a contact uh, form. You just fill that out with a message if you have. If you are uh, someone who would like to be a guest, use that same contact form. There's on the MGO pod, there's a guest pre-interview. See if you qualify, basically. If you're a publicist for somebody who would like to get on the show, of course, use that too and get a, get a hold of me through the contact form. I just hope that uh, it's not too Pollyannish for me just to say that someday we're all going to uh, be plugging a, a nickel into the uh, jukebox time machine and we're going to look back at 2020 and the music and the mood and I hope we can look back and say we made it we did the best we could and we learned something from it but what does it mean the plague it's life that's all Albert Camus the plague until next time Don't stop believing. Wash your hands and keep reading. From regular expenses to occasional splurges, there's a lot to buy. Why not get cash back every time you spend? With the PenFed Power Cash Rewards Card, you get cash back on every purchase. That's everywhere, every time you use it. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Visit PenFed.org slash PowerCash to apply. To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA. From regular expenses to occasional splurges, there's a lot to buy. Why not get cash back every time you spend? With the PenFed PowerCash Rewards Card, you get cash back on every purchase. That's everywhere, every time you use it. You can even earn a $100 statement credit when you spend $1,500 in the first 90 days. Visit PenFed.org slash PowerCash to apply. 
To receive any advertised product, you must become a member of PenFed, insured by NCUA.